The creator team on which I'm a member has an abundance of skill sets, interesting stories and industry related knowledge. Yet this treasure trove of insight often remains locked into our smaller day-to-day -day circles. And I think that other UXers and other people in general actually would appreciate hearing about this. So on the channel, I thought we'd try something new uh, to unlock some of these insights to a broader audience. So to that end, I'd like to introduce a new idea on the channel called Interview Relay. Basically what it is, is a chain, an interview chain. So I'll interview say, our amazing researcher Julio, and I'll find out about his day-to-day -day life and his career and interesting things like that. And then he will take the baton, which is the badge, and he'll pass it on to someone he wants to interview. And so the chain continues, the interviewee becomes the interviewer and so on. So let's jump in and create that first link in the chain and meet Julio. So, hey Julio, thanks for um, taking the time to chat to the channel today. Um, how's it going? Uh, hello, Rob. It's going great. Thank you. I'm in one of our offices right now, shooting, uh, yeah, talking to you. Excellent. Well, maybe we should kick off by giving the viewers a little intro to you and your role, perhaps, what it involves and what a day-to-day -day, uh, looks like. Yeah. So uh, I am Julio Angulo. I am a UX researcher in the Creator YouTube Analytics team. And as a UX researcher, I basically try to understand the needs, opinions, behaviors of our users, which in, our, in this case, our users are YouTube creators. So then I take their feedback, all those things, and I, we, and I transfer those to our team so that they can develop great products for them. Awesome. Awesome. Um, and maybe, so you kind of, your day-to-day -day is listening to people, getting their insights and understanding where there's like needs within our product. How did you get into that? Like, how did you want, you know, early on, how did you decide you want to become a researcher? Is it something you knew early on or was it more of a, like an organic path into this uh, role? Yeah, that's a good question. It was mostly like an organic path into this role, I think. Uh, I actually studied to become a computer science scientist. Oh, wow. That okay. was my major. Uh, that's something that uh, kind of, I always thought I was gonna be a computer scientist. Uh, but then during my university years, I actually took some courses in psychology. I also realized that I was not that good of a computer scientist. <laughs> and then, uh, I took an exchange year in Sweden where I took my first class in uh, human computer interaction. And then <clears throat> I think that's when I realized like, wow, this is cool way of um, combining computer science with uh, giving users what they need basically. And that's something that I thought was really interesting and really uh, yeah, I, I got a passion for that, I guess, at that time. And uh, <clears throat> But I graduated as a computer scientist. Uh, but when I did my master's, uh, that's where I found that probably uh, th there, was, there was a master's in, in interaction design and a thing called uh, com uh, ubiquitous computing, uh, which at that time meant uh, the Internet of Things, basically. It's computers mm -hmm. everywhere, uh, sensors yeah. embedded in the environment, things like that. So, um, so th doing that masters, I think that started shaping me as a researcher. And then Very I became, cool. I, I did a, I did a PhD, which shaped me further into, into a researcher, I guess. But in the topic of design, so I was a, a bit of a, a, a bit of a mix, design and research. Yeah. 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 Always amazes me actually, um, just the varied kind of careers that we have here in like YouTube and Google. I remember on a previous team, uh, we had someone who worked at NASA who then became a a Googler on the, an engineer on Google. So it's, it's yeah, it's really interesting to see all these different kind of uh, variations in how people started and where they end up and. Maybe, yeah, like I'll follow on 
by asking, were there any competing careers early on that you considered? So obviously you you trained in computer science, which is pretty amazing actually. Um, but like early on, as you kind of maybe left school or you kind of went to college, were you always thinking along the lines of computing and um, the tech world or did you have other kind of areas that you wanted to explore? I think uh, since I was little, uh, I always uh, thought that I was going to study computer science. And I think that came uh, because my dad was working uh, with computers a lot. Uh, so he had his own company and he uh, working with computers, basically. So I was there in the company uh, as a kid with all their, his employees showing me how to use the computers things like that. Then he had a store as well when he sold computers and he he tried, it was like the, one of the first uh, internet cafes kind of thing, but before the internet. So he was renting uh, games instead. So he was uh, inviting people to come use their computers to play games cool. uh, and learn. <clears throat> so all the time I was thinking of going into computer scientists and into computer science. Uh, and as I said, when I actually didn't go into computer science. I graduated and uh, I realized that it was a very competitive field where I was living at. I, I studied in Canada. Uh, and uh, it was very hard for me to get a job as a computer scientist, actually. Uh, and then they, uh, I got a, finally I got a job, um, but a job that we're gonna relocate me to Bolivia. And at that time, when I was gonna pack my bags, basically go to Bolivia, a uh, civil war started uh, breaking out in Bolivia. So then I couldn't go. And that's when I decided to go to Sweden instead to do my master's in, in interaction design. Very cool. I mean, it sounds like you've had quite a varied um, experience with the different places you've stayed, right? So you you originate from Mexico, but then you... Exactly trained in Canada and now you're in Sweden. What's it like kind of um, doing a master's or doing further education in a, you know, in a foreign country? Was it something that had its own challenges or kind of unique insights? Yeah, definitely. It was very special and it's very different from country to country, I guess. Um, Canada, Canada and Sweden are somewhat similar in the weather the people, uh, but uh, the reason I went to Sweden to study my master's, uh, besides going there to, on a, on a, I went to Sweden on an exchange year first, and then I went to study my master's. And uh, it was because it was free. A Swedish, either, a Swedish education at the time was free for everybody. Everybody in the world could apply to go to study in Sweden. Uh, they changed those rules uh, now. But uh, I was one of the lucky ones that could do uh, my master's. Actually, I did two masters in Sweden that were for free. And, uh, and both of them were in the field of design and, and user experience. So that uh, I feel very lucky about that. And, uh, but the, the, as you said, the environments of those two countries were very different. Sweden is much more relaxed. You are more independent in what you do you kind of study on your own and you have courses maybe once or twice a week and the rest you have to read on your own and then you do exams and things like that. So yeah, very different styles. What about you? You study where in the UK? Yeah, so I actually had a bit of an interesting path as well when it comes to my career. So I studied in the UK in uh, Leeds, which is in the north of the country. Um, and then after that, the problem was trying to find the work. It was actually kind of hard to break into the field of design. So I had a number of jobs where perhaps I would be taken on as, you know, just help, but only paid maybe travel expenses to go from my hometown of York to Leeds. And I kind of saw this as valuable experience, although, you know, it would be nice to be paid a proper salary. But was then as like that kind of... Sorry. Was, was it like a voluntary volunteering? Yeah. yeah, exactly. So I would go and be like, hey, you know, I'm really, I'm a designer. I've trained. I really want to get into the industry. Yeah. Are there any positions? And, you know, the, it's a kind of classic thing of 
well, we need someone with experience, mm -hmm. but how do you get experience without getting the role, right? You need the role to get experience. Um, so I would be like, well, can I come on, you know, free and I'll work just to get the experience. I do have good work. I have good ideas. Yeah. And that, a lot of them were open to that. And that carried on for maybe a couple of years, actually. Um, and then I was like, you know, I need to get a proper job. Um, and something came up in Scotland, um, mm -hmm. in Edinburgh, as an in-house designer for a law firm. So okay. it was kind of not quite what I would pictured my kind of design aspirations mm -hmm. to be, but it looked like an interesting role. So I went up, I, I went up to Edinburgh. Uh, luckily, I had family there, so I could mm -hmm. crash with them until I got myself established. But how um, long did you stay at that job? Yeah, I, I stayed there for a year. Um, and it was a cool job, actually. Like, it was nice. I got to manage the budget. So mm -hmm. it was a lot of print design. So I could, like, really pick out really nice paper stocks um, and really kind of do some interesting um, print design. But then um, my wife, my now wife, my girlfriend at the time, went to Switzerland um, as a teacher. Mm. And she was like, oh, you know, perhaps you should try um, finding some work over here. So, you know, basically I had an online portfolio, which is a key bit of advice for any aspiring designer, I feel, is to have a really good online presence, just ready to go, because you mm -hmm. never quite know when that opportunity is going to arise. Um, I didn't speak any German. So I wrote an email out in English, like an introductory email, and copied that into Google Translate into German, and then copied the English and German into an email, and then did some research on design companies um, in Switzerland, and just sent out this email. And within a couple of months, I'd been offered a job in Basel, which is on the border between Germany and France. And there, that was how my career in Switzerland began. And um, I worked in a number of different design agencies in Switzerland, which was interesting because it was this foreign world of different languages, different approaches. And it, it really brought me on as a designer, I feel. And then um, being in Switzerland for about five or six years, um, I saw the opportunity at Google and applied for it. And, you know, that's why I'm here today, basically. So wow. again, How's for you? me, a bit of a... A winding path as well really so. absolutely how's your swiss german <laughs> my swiss german is not as good as what it should be but my hochdeutsch is okay uh, it's hopefully i'll do my b2 exam next year so yeah nice. that's where i'm at but i think that just kind of illustrates this interesting and winding path that sometimes it takes to get into this career um and maybe i was wondering if there were any funny moments that you had in your career or maybe fun moments, let's say, because I think we can talk about the role, we can talk about the uh, discipline, but it's always nice to hear about the more personable side to it. So I was wondering if you could maybe share any anything along those lines. Yeah, um, fun moments. Uh, and the thing that comes to my mind <clears throat> about that is uh, the opportunities I had to travel. Uh, work travel or when doing my studies uh, travel to conferences on design i went to kai for instance in korea i think in the state in vancouver i think as well um travel for work uh, that's something that that i really really like uh, I, I had the opportunity in my previous team at google which was google meet i was working for google meet uh, and at that time, I had the opportunity to visit a lot of big companies. So going to their their headquarters and their offices, see see how they do things, uh, especially how they do meetings, because we, it was part of my job to understand how people do meetings, so that we could improve Google Meet. Uh, so I went uh, to the offices of uh, Twitter, for instance, Netflix, Spotify, Salesforce. Uh, that was super interesting. Uh, we have also this internal UX conference that I love to at attending to, uh, the UX University at Google. Uh, it used to happen every year in person in the pandemic in California. And that was a great opportunity to meet other uh, UXers at Google 
I exchange ideas, just meet people, uh, see what they are working on, things like that. So I really, really, really liked uh, that traveling aspect of my job. Yeah, that's great. I mean, that is one thing I enjoyed a lot too before the whole COVID world. I remember one of my projects meant I was talking a lot to the uh, major record labels. So I was traveling a lot to New York and talking to people, you know, in UMG and places like that and getting to see this whole another side to, um, yeah, that you just, I hadn't experienced before and like kind of being able to spend a bit of time in a big city like that uh, was fantastic actually. Um, good times. And hopefully we can go back to that at some point, right? Without this uh, whole kind of COVID world that we find ourselves in. Hopefully. Maybe, um, uh, yeah, how how have you adapted to this whole new world, this kind of work from home world? Like, have you adapted well to it? Or is there any kind of tips that you can maybe share of how you've approached that? Yeah, that's an interesting question. So uh, I think I adapted relatively well. There has been up and downs, tough periods, especially with people with children, as you know. Um, but in general, uh, well, and, and I think the question is interesting because of the, of the research aspect of it or how we did our job before. As I said, going to places, visiting users uh, where they actually do their work or where they, where they use our products. And that changed completely, right? So now our research is mostly remote and we have tried, we, we tried to leverage the different tools we have to be able to do that. Just getting, getting feedback from users using Google Meet a lot of the times, but also surveys, unmoderated tools, um, and other things like that. So yeah, I just I just did fairly well. What about you? How is uh, you have two kids, right? Three kids. Two kids. Two, two is kids. enough for me. Yeah. Um, yeah. I guess for me it was a bit of a shock at, at first. Um, I did not have a home set up in any way. Like for me, life was every day in the office. Um, so then I, you know, had the. I'm sure many other people had this as well, where you have a month of just working on a laptop on your on your lap and um, trying to do the best you can. And then slowly I bought a desk, I bought like a nice chair and so on and um, got myself set up. And I think honestly, there are some positives that have come from a very negative thing, which is mm -hmm. the more flexible style of work that probably will come from this. Um, you know, it helps True. people with families who are in different countries or whatever, just be there to support their partners a bit more. So for me, that I think is good. Um, obviously, one of the major cons of it is the face-to-face -face interaction. I would love to have this conversation with you now in a room together. Right. Um, also, like new people join in. It's difficult because it's all virtual. Um, so I've adapted okay. Um but I am excited for a world where I can have lunch with my colleagues and just kind of get to know them face to face again. So, um, yeah, right. hopefully we, next year will be a different year for that. I think we met like uh, two or three times face to face before everything got uh, yeah. yeah closed. <laughs> yeah, it was a strange time, but. Strange um, time. Yeah, like maybe I'll ask you the opposite of the funny moment and ask you what was the scariest moment or what was a, a moment in your career that really put you outside of your comfort zone? Uh, yeah, um, I remember this time or actually one of my entry jobs as a interaction designer. So I was an interaction designer at first, was in this company called UIQ in Sweden the south of Sweden, who, which basically develop a mobile operating system, uh, which is was a competitive to the Nokia operating system. And when the iPhone came, then everybody wanted to have an iPhone and nobody, nobody wanted to have our old operating system anymore. So the company went bankrupt uh, and everybody was out of a job, everybody in the company was out of a job, including me. 
Uh, so that was a, a, a bit of a scary moment because then, of course, everybody lost their jobs. But also for me, my Swedish visa was dependent depending on that job. So I had uh, I, I ran the risk of being kicked out of Sweden because I was just having like this work visa that was connected to the job. Uh, but I, I instead of that, I took the opportunity, started studying Swedish. And uh, that's when I enrolled myself in the second master's in the, that was called interaction design, basically. And, and at that time, interaction design was not a super big thing yet. So, so that 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 kind of tunneled me forward into this uh, field of, of user experience. Um, so it was a scary moment, but I I I think I took the advantage of it i guess and then yeah definitely it helped me so, along the way did you did you study the masters in swedish in the in the swedish language some courses we were in swedish but wow. very few most okay. that's another advantage of the swedish education is that a lot of the courses are in english and swedish people are almost native english speakers <laughs> a lot of them speak english very well yeah, yeah, I can imagine. Um, it's also kind of like that in Switzerland, right? A lot of people speak English as well. Yeah, um, in Zurich, at least. Yeah, yeah. I was going to ask you, um, how? what was your decision to come to the creator team and YouTube? Obviously, you mentioned before that you worked in different teams in Google. Mm -hmm. And once you established yourself as a, a good, you know, a good researcher or a good designer, which you are, um, you have, you can basically choose, right? You can choose where to go. And I wondered why you chose YouTube and why you, you know, decided the creator team. Uh, yeah, well, the YouTube is, of course, a, a very big product used by many, many people. I was not super aware or I didn't have any insights on how the the backside of YouTube works. Basically, these this kind of creator, the, the people who make the videos and put them up there. I had very little idea. I just I just watched the videos, but it never occurred to me that there was a lot of effort put into those videos. But uh, the opportunity came across um, internally, and then I talked to a couple of people. I knew their role was in Switzerland. And I was excited to move to Switzerland from Sweden because uh, Google Meet is developed in Sweden. There's a whole a story around how Google Meet was developed, uh, which is interesting for another occasion, probably. But uh, <clears throat> but yeah, so the, the opportunity to move to Switzerland excited me to kind of know this user group, which are YouTube creators, also was interesting. Uh, and I heard a lot of good things about the team. Uh, especially the, the the atmosphere that the UX team in the creator studio had. So it was almost like a no-brainer. Well, as soon as they told me that I could move, uh, I, I got very excited and I started working with you actually in, in aspects of copyright <laughs> and, uh, and, and music at YouTube. And how, how long have you been on the team now, Julio? Well, I started when the pandemic started so almost two years i guess a, a bit more than a year and a half so. yeah and it is true isn't it that the the team is such a welcoming such a kind of safe place to be creative and really push um yourself to learn new things and try new things that's something you know i found out i've been on the team for five years plus now and i still think it's a fantastic place to work. Um, you mm -hmm. know, the support network is there, the kind of challenges there, um, and just the day-to-day -day is really fun, right? Like the people are really good to be around. Um, so yeah, I think it's a fantastic place to work. Um, what was your previous team? So I worked before YouTube on the webmaster team, believe it or not. So this is kind of a strange team and I'm not sure it really even exists anymore, which is when before the whole kind of material design world, 
there used to be a lot of kind of marketing-based Google websites that would cover things like, I mean, I remember doing a website for COP16, you know, the environmental um, forum that happens every year. Mm -hmm. I think we just had COP26, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So um, we, well, there was lots of Google initiatives around that and they needed a team to build these websites to design them and so on. So I was a visual designer on the team. Mm -hmm. And it was great role actually, because it allowed me to do the craft that I at the time was most um, trained in, which was uh, visual design. Um, but also got to learn loads of new things like coding, like JavaScript coding and kind of running a command line um, programming language and stuff like that. So all completely new to me and it just blew yeah. my mind. Um, and then after five years, um, I saw the opportunity on YouTube. I've been at Google for nearly 11 years now. Um, and I saw the opportunity at YouTube and I took it and I have just never looked back, basically. It's just been a fantastic um, choice that I made. Um, yeah. All right. All right. That's um, great insights. And maybe um, I'll ask you one final question, um, which I think is a really important question. And that would be, what advice would you have for someone trying to get into the field of research who maybe has just left university or you know, maybe hasn't gone the university path. What what advice would you give for people like that? Uh, yes. Well, first of all, don't be a jerk. <laughs> nobody likes jerks. <laughs> yeah. I think a lot of your job as a researcher depends on, on the connections you have with people, uh, not only with your users, because uh, you a big part of it is asking them questions, getting to know them, kind of empathize with them a lot, but also uh, the communications you have with your teammates and your stakeholders that want to listen to you, or maybe they don't want to listen to you, but you want them to listen to you <laughs> uh, because you have all these great insights from your users. So being, um, you know, reading the room, uh, <clears throat> empathizing, being polite, uh, that's, I think that's an important part, but also, at least for me, I think a good characteristic of a researcher is being, being uh, curious about things, about the world, about how people think, and also very observant or mindful, like getting, getting, uh, getting things that are not obvious or translating, translating things uh, that people say into what the team uh, can do, basically, I guess. Um, so yeah, those would be my tips. Don't be a jerk, stay curious, <laughs> be observant, and try to think differently, I guess, to, uh, to do these translations. All right, good stuff. Well, I think that was an absolute pleasure talking to you today. Um, one final thing. So this is a chain, right? So we have the baton, and I'm going to pass this to you now, Julio. So I'm going to pass this. Oh, 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 wait. <laughs> okay, here. It is. Oh, you got it. Perfect. You got it. I can see that it fell off the side of the computer a bit, but that's yeah, fine. You yeah, got it. Yeah. Um, Perfect. And then the next stage will be now for the interviewee to become the interviewer. So stay tuned. Um, and Julio will be giving some really insightful questions to whomever you choose. So. Yeah, I look forward to hearing that. Well, really? thanks, Julio, and yeah, take care, man. Thank you, Rob. Thank you for all the fun questions and your stories, and see you next time.